What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today Christian McCaffrey was traded to the 49ers from the Carolina Panthers for a plethora of picks. So we're going to be doing a mock draft, going to give you guys a two for one this week and this is going to be an all encapsulating two round mock in this video. So if you guys are new, like, comment, subscribe. We just breached 5,000 subscribers. That is absolutely awesome. That was a huge milestone. And you know what? Just barely over two years into this, it is a very big step towards making this my full-time career. So let's get right on into it. I would love to hear you guys' discourse down in the comment section below. Go to the Discord. We're going to be doing a fan mock draft very soon. Got to figure out the timing on that. But you got to be part of the Discord to be a part of that. And I want you guys to all enjoy it. So again, enjoy that because it's awesome. I haven't done a fan mock draft in a while. And I love talking to you guys. You guys can always hit me up there. But again, drop your criticism down below. Just remember, don't be a dick about it because I like to learn from my mistakes rather than just being hazed for it. It's not very fun when you don't actually enjoy being able to make good content for you guys, which I do. So make sure that learning process is enjoyable for me as well as it is for you. Let's continue. Let's get right into this. This does have trade. So again, this is going to be a little bit of a girthy mock and we're going to try to do this as quickly as possible because again, we already did one this week and the mock draft order didn't change that much. This is updated for Monday Night Football according to the uh, Tankathon draft order, which is just based off of record. So let's get into this again before the people start complaining about uh, pick 17 being the Niner or being or pick, excuse me, pick 19 being the Niners pick. Uh, I'm just going off the draft order right now. Honestly, it just means the Panthers get better picks. So pick number one, if you are sitting here, this has to be a quarterback. Again, if you guys see me looking this way, it's because I now have transitioned to a big ass PC and I actually have a monitor rather than my Mac laptop screen to look at. So right here, if we're going to be looking and seeing what the Panthers should be able to do, they need to go a quarterback. That's the bottom line. If you're selling your team, you're trying to restart and to me, the best guy for that is Bryce Young. Like he really does offer like the most upside in terms of a like leader. He just, his mental processing is on another level. It's him and CJ at the top. If you guys like CJ, go CJ. I could care less. So we're going to be going with Bryce Young right here. Again, really damn good player. Very excited to see him in the NFL. Again, issues. He doesn't have a super elite arm. It's not like he's going to zip it into the tightest windows. He doesn't have a Will Levis or an Anthony Richardson arm, but he does have a plus arm. He has a good enough arm. He's an amazing processor. He does have issues with his size and he injured his AC. So there are concerns. Again, one of my biggest issues with this class, I don't know if there's a franchise level quarterback in it. And honestly, I don't know if this is going to pan out for the Panthers, but if it doesn't, there's still going to be some good QBs in the next draft. I'm sure there's, there's Arch Manning coming up in the future too. There is hope. So let's go on with it. Pick number two, the Raiders. And this time, this one, I am not going to be trading back because I know from my Lions fans, uh, if Jalen Carter's there at pick number three, you go pick number three for Jalen Carter. Uh, and this is a necessity. You need to add it. Again, people will say Will Anderson. If you are at number two, you should start considering QB, but I don't think anybody in this class is good enough to compete with Carr. I'm just going to be honest. And I'm not the huge Carr stand that a lot of people think that I might be because I'm just not that huge of a fan of Derek Carr. But the fact is, I'm a lot bigger of a fan of him than anybody in this class, including Bryce Young. So uh, Jalen Carter going to add to that. You might want to say, hey, Alex, why not go Will Anderson? Well, my only response to that would be Will Anderson is great. So don't get me wrong there. I just think that you're not going to add anything by adding an extra guy to Chandler Jones and Max Crosby the way you would by having Jalen Carter rush with all with both those guys on the field. So let's continue here with the Lions and if the Lions are sitting at pick number three, they should consider a quarterback. But again, I don't know if their franchise is like, okay, we're set on this one dude. If they are, then they're pulling the trigger on Stroud. They're pulling the trigger on Levis. I'm not going to do that for you guys just yet because one, it's not very fun uh, to just select a quarterback right here. But two, there's guys who are like much higher ceiling later on that I'd feel a lot more comfortable with. And with this pick, I mean, again, you can go Will Anderson, but people say, you guys are saying, hey, we want a true five tech. We don't want someone who could be more of that outside linebacker rusher. And I respect that. Therefore, um, Miles Murphy is still my number one player in the draft. This guy is incredible. He does fit on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson very well. He can kick inside. You don't really have much of a different option here with the value. 
You could try to trade back with a team like the Texans, but the thing is, they're not going to try to move up for a QB. I'm looking at the teams here. Not many of them are that desperate to select a quarterback. Again, I don't really think like Seattle, but Seattle, if I'm them, I'm saying, hey, Gino, you're going to play at this level. I'm going to give you a one-year contract or a two-year prove-it contract, and then I'm going to bring in Caleb Williams if you suck. I'm going to bring in Quinn Ewers. I'm going to bring in Drake May. So I don't really feel the necessity to give up your other first-round pick for this. So Miles Murphy it is. Let's continue the hype train. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, I, I swear to God, I did not mean for this to happen. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> Howie Roseman gets Will Anderson. Uh, so that is, uh, wow. I did not mean for that to happen. Just going to be completely honest. That was a genuine reaction. Um, wow. So Will Anderson's to the Eagles, who, according to their draft position here, have won the Super Bowl. Don't think that they, I think they'll be in the Super Bowl. That was one of my Super Bowl picks at the start of the year. But don't know if they have the ability to beat teams that can actually put up a shit ton of points. But holy, Jesus, man. I'm, I I don't, we don't have time to comment about that. Holy crap. Uh, Again, this is a totally different mock draft already from the one that I've already done. So we're already off to a good start. CJ Stroud has to be the pick here. If you're at pick five, Davis Mills isn't the answer. Uh, neither is Will Levis at the at this moment. I watched it over again. I love watching. Um, so you got to give a shout out. So when you don't have all 22, especially for you guys, because I do have all 22. But if you guys don't, do a barrel roll. I have to give him a shout out. He does a pretty damn good job. Sometimes really late on the uploads. But like if you guys are just looking at every single play of an offense, you pretty much get to watch the whole game in 20 minutes because he cuts out every single like special teams. It's really cool. If you guys really want to do that, go watch those because, again, it does show you what the highlights don't. And with Will Levis especially, like when All-22 isn't out an hour or two after a game, it's kind of nice to be able to have that instant exposure and then confirm it later on. Regardless, pick number six, if the Cleveland... Wow. Well, the Cleveland Browns would be sitting here if they didn't trade for Deshaun Watson. So hopefully Deshaun's relaxing, hopefully not in a massage lounge, but... At pick number six, if you are going to add to C.J. Stroud, I mean, there's a plethora of dudes here who could just absolutely light it up. Again, you already have that quarterback realm fixed. And of course, I would love to try to target like a different skilled position here. I don't think cornerback or wide receiver is very much of a need right now. Offensive line, I do think, is something you could try to target. This is a position where I honestly feel comfortable trading out of. Like, I don't really think you need to get a guy here. There is, like, if you want to go wide receiver and say Stroud, you had really good wide receivers, we're going to continue adding to that. Uh, Quentin Johnston has been taking a major leap for me. And, I mean, you could definitely go that way. I really want to trade out of this pick. Let's have a little bit of fun here. You know, again, there is Will Levis on the board. You do have some high-end edge rushers as well, which I might end up defaulting back to. But, I mean, again, looking at the players on the board, you do have some top-end wide receivers Man, there's just, I don't think there's anybody good enough to trade up for here. Uh, Between you and me, I don't really think that, like, there's somebody that special. Again, we could end up seeing um, a team try to trade up for, I mean, you could honestly continue adding to the corner core. And Texans fans, feel free to remind me if you guys do need a second corner here. Because personally, I'd be very happy if I got Joey Porter, because again, cover two scheme. Joey Porter is the best zone cover corner in the class, and he's better at man now too. I think Joey Porter's a top 10 lock, and he's either going to hear the... He's, he's within the next three picks. So, again, you choose whichever poison that you want. Right now, I honestly kind of want to move up with the Steelers for Joey Porter. Because, again, you guys might say, Alex, that's kind of ridiculous. The Steelers shouldn't have to move up for Joey Porter. But if I'm going to be honest here, uh, I'd be very scared of the Seattle Seahawks looking for him if they're not looking for a QB. So, if I'm the Steelers, I want to get my selection of the dude... And again, the difference, okay, no, we're not trading up with the Seahawks, with the Steelers. Um, The difference between pick six and pick eight, pick eight, if I'm not mistaken, is roughly a third round pick. And if I am the Steelers, I don't know if I'd be willing to give up that type of draft capital. So I'd be willing to give up a next year fourth and a this year fourth. And if I'm the Texans, again, you're looking at this spot. I mean, hell, you're getting another player to be able to go in. It said the trade will not be accepted. That's because the teams don't want it. So that's going to be the value. Again, it's not affecting this mock draft anyway, no matter the selections I make. So 
With this pick, the Steelers are going to be taking their stamp on their own dude in Joey Porter. Obviously, his dad played there for the Steelers. Pick seven, we have this, uh, the Seattle Seahawks on the board via the Denver Broncos, who are just an absolute train wreck. And, like, again, this could be a spot where you go Will Levis. And we honestly might. You never know. We, we might. I mean, I'm seeing other teams here who might want them. If I'm Washington, I'd be at least considering it. Um, I would not do it if I'm the Bears, just to be blunt. I don't really see Will Levis going anytime soon, to be honest with you. Like, if you're looking at all these quarterbacks, I don't really see him going. So why do you need to trade up for him? Now, I could see a team like the Packers, if they really think Aaron Rodgers is going to be gone soon, they might be like, hey, screw it. We're going to make a move. But honestly, I don't really think that's the best option. Now, we could see a team like the Colts be like, hey, what's up? But um, that's not going to be the case right now. If I am the Seattle Seahawks, I'd absolutely be considering it. But I mean, again, I think you got to go with a big playmaker here. Cornerback is getting paid $20 million a year. I think you have to get someone who's absolutely locked down. And you have seen what Tariq Woolen's able to do. And if you guys want to wait to the fifth round for that, that's more than fine with me. But at this moment, I think that it's more than imperative to be able to go after a high value player. And Keely Ringo certainly is somebody who I think would really fit the Seattle Seahawks. Again, you need somebody besides Tariq Woolen. Now you're going to have a no-fly zone again. He's really good in the run game as well. And obviously, now you're facing Christian McCaffrey. And um, I mean, hell, the Rams always have somebody going. And then, you know, Kyler Murray. So you want somebody to be able to lock down in that division that's very run heavy. Pick number eight, we had the we have the Texans back on the board. And again, I would think I might honestly be considering a corner here, but I wouldn't trade from six to eight to get go from corner one to corner three, right? So it would not make sense. I do think offensive line certainly could be the move. And if I am the uh, Texans here, I think the best move, and this is going to be a ballsy move. I'm just going to be honest. This is not one from pure logic here, but this is just follow my, tr- my thought train here. Peter Skaronsky, he is projected to be a tackle, but he also has some people who think he's going to be a guard. He could be a guard in the short run while he's still learning. He's a very good pass blocker. Um, He's a very mean run blocker, and you could be putting him at one of those guard spots with the eventual moving to a right tackle. And again, Titus Howard, the tackles cost a lot of money. I would not be paying that much money for Titus Howard. So for me, I think that would be a very good move. And you know what? We're going to go with it. You also want to protect Stroud. So you don't want to pay $20 million to a tackle who's not worth it. You also want to make sure your quarterback's protected. So I think it's a good mesh. It's a free pick, essentially, because I know that we used, um, yeah, this is from Cleveland and now Pittsburgh. So AFC North representation here, but it's a free pick and you might as well use it on a high value position. There's plenty of other positions you could target here, but honestly, I don't think any of them are as valuable as a tackle, especially when you know I'm the one drafting because I love offensive line. So pick number nine, the Jaguars are here and it's another team where I would consider Peter Skaronsky. 100%. I think that would be a great choice for the franchise because, again, guard slash tackle hybrid. Um, If you're sitting here, it's going to be Quentin Johnston. Uh, He's moved up into the elite tier for me. And, like, just watching him, he's special. He really does. I have my eye on Garrett Wilson, who's my number one wide receiver last year, and he's popping off as well. I feel like I have a pretty good knack for being able to find these, like, actually, like, top of the top wide receivers. And... Uh, Quentin Johnson's the next one in line. He really is just taking his game up to another level over the past couple of weeks. Pick number 10. Honestly, so I made the video for um, Stock Up, Stock Down without re-watching Oklahoma State game. And I watched it again last night. I was like, I should move him higher. And I did. He's actually in my top five right now. Guy's ridiculous. Pick 10, the Bears would have loved Quentin Johnston. But if you are sitting here, Again, I think you have, like, the defense is where I would love to go. The value's there just because of the fact that this team's identity is on defense and you should spend money where you can't develop. And it seems to be on the offense. But the fact is, there's nobody really worth it. So go after offensive line. And Broderick Jones is a guy who's really damn good. You can go after Javon Foster, Anton Harrison. I have Javon above Broderick Jones, just to be honest. I have him as my tackle one. But... I think Broderick Jones is just more suited for the Bears overall, so we're going to be going with Broderick Jones. Uh, Washington definitely does need offensive line as well, but I don't know if they pull the trigger on it at number 11, and I'm hoping that they can remesh as an offensive line over the year. 
So for me, I think it's down to quarterback with Will Levis, which I think would be a phenomenal move. I really do. I think that would be a very good move for the team um, to be able to add him in. But here's the thing. I had Sam Howell graded higher. I do think Sam Howell is the future of the team. So I'm going to say pause on that because of that factor. I'm just going to be honest. And this team, uh, they don't have their second round pick. I traded it away because if they're going to be starting Taylor Heineke rather than Sam Howell, because Sam Howell's not ready to take the starting reps yet, then I think this team is more than likely going to bring back Carson Wentz rather than saying, hey, if Sam Howell performs well, then we're going to stick with Sam. So with that being said, you need to hit on positions of extreme value. And the thing is, I'm going to draft a lot of these corners because I'm a big fan of them. And Garrett Williams is an absolute monster. I have him in my top 15, if I'm if not top 10. He's absolutely sticky in coverage. He is on another level. Can play safety as well if you want him to because Syracuse just does that. So big fan of Garrett Williams. Huge fan of him. Pick number 12. The Cardinals are sitting here on the board. And again, it's another team that could just say, hey, we're going to continue boosting through the wide receiver room. I don't know how long Robbie Anderson has left on his contract. I think it's two years. So, you know, obviously you traded, I think, what, a very late round pick for him. That could definitely be the option. But I also want to be able to look at other options like offensive line. I do know the running back has come into the equation with Bijan Robinson. But when I am trying to analyze what this team is really built for, like you have essentially these top three nailed. This could be a second round issue, third round issue, regardless. Uh, offensive line certainly is something I would like to address. But again, this team really should be honing in on the defense, defensive interior, linebacker. People are saying Isaiah Simmons is not it. Edge rusher. I think edge rusher could be a really good option. And because I don't know if my guy is really going to be the answer, jumping off sides, being bailed out by a timeout, may I say. But I mean, overall, I love to go cornerback for this team because I think this team desperately needs it and a center in the next round. And I think I actually might still go that way. I Okay, we highlighted all of it. Love that. So when I'm looking at this, somebody who I really do think would be a really fun option for this team um, is, I mean, Tyree Stevenson's great, but we're going to, it's not Noah Daniels. Uh, it's going to end up being Christian Gonzalez. So again, you need a lockdown corner. You see Byron Murphy taking a step up and he's going to be, he needs somebody to be a true boundary threat. And Marco Wilson could eventually be that. I'm not really sure, but for now, that's going to be it. Pick 13 with the Falcons. Mm. Another team that could use a corner too. So to be fair, the cards need a boundary corner one. But with the Falcons, I think that there's a plethora of options you could go here. Again, I think edge rusher might be the best return on your investment. I know defensive interior is a big hit for this team, but I don't think anybody's really worth it at this moment. So uh, when we're looking through the positions here, I think, again, there are rumors that Bijan is hinted to this team. A lot of people, including my buddy Cam Marino, who is a big fan of them, uh, they bring up Bijan all the time. Like, they're huge fans of Bijan Robinson. But again, I don't know how I could pull that trigger when you could go after someone like Jameer Gibbs maybe later on. Uh, you could, again, trade back here. There is still Will Levis on the board, and I do kind of want to do a trade back. There's been a lot of talks between these two teams, and... <clears throat> and you look at it, this team has another second round pick, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because they are getting it for Commander Wentz. Why not use that to trade up? So we are actually going to have the Indianapolis Colts make a move here, again, because they have a second, um, second round pick. And God only knows why the hell this font changed, because it is absolutely driving me insane. Uh, it might be just because I have a new computer. So obviously you're going to have to be able to make a move up here. Uh, we are going to be using our second round pick because if I'm not mistaken, that's around 500 points in value. And this is close to like 900. And this one's probably close to about like 1,200. So we'll need a pick in return. And that is why we are going to be able to snatch back that 108. Again, I do think that it's fair to say that the Falcons would end up netting this because of the fact that the Colts have that free money. But this is going to end up being Will Levis. Uh, this has not happened yet, so very fun to see that Will Levis falls to 13 and then ends up being a Colts quarterback. Pick 14, Seattle's back on the board. And again, honestly, I think this would be a really fun option because he doesn't need to produce right away. But it's not Iabi Okie. 
I have to see over the camera to be able to uh, click the button. But um, it's going to be Jared Verse. So Jared Verse out of Florida State, really damn good player. Uh, I, apart from injuries, he's a top five player in the class. Really damn good guy. Like he he flashed off this year. Came from Albany. He's been putting up consistent pressure all his career. Pick 15, the Bengals. And if the Bengals are sitting here, which I don't think they will be, uh, you better go after offensive line. Like you, it's it's imperative, and you have to get someone better in. I'm going Andrew Voorhees here for the team. Like you have to. Like you just, it's a necessity. You have the quarterback. You have the weapons. Uh, so the next thing to do is build the offensive line and you guys are starting to do that, but Cordell Volson, not the answer pick 16. So I'm going to go back to the wide receiver train. We're going to go back to Jordan Addison here. Mac Jones played best with Jalen Waddle, um, and Devonte Smith, pretty similar comp for Jordan Addison pick 17. The Packers would have loved to snatch up on Will Levis maybe because obviously Jordan Love has not been the answer so far. Regardless, I think that saves me from a lot of flack being able to trade up. So if I'm sitting here, I'm looking at Jackson Smith and Jigba and I'm like, it's about damn time. You know, if we're talking about them trying to go after Chase Claypool, which this could be ending up being a Steelers pick because uh, there are rumors of a first involved, that would be a dream. That'd be a dream. I know people are going to say I'm delusional, but just check out Marcus Whitman, that franchise guy on Twitter. Love him. Big fan. But, um, you know, he's talking about like saying, hey, it'd be worth it to send a first, which honestly, I think that'd be beneficial for both sides. You know, Chase has shown his potential, but hasn't maximized it there. And he could in Green Bay. Pick 18 with the Buccaneers. And, you know, with the Buccaneers, you should probably be trying to go after a QB at this point. I don't think anybody's really worth it, though. Again, Anthony Richardson, like I'd be taking him near this spot of the draft. I would potentially trade back if that's what you want to do. But if you are sitting here, I think you got to go with Bijan. I've been doing this for a while now. I think it's pretty imperative that you should be able to get at least one identity on offense. And Bijan Robinson is that type of guy. Pick 19 uh, and one of the San Francisco picks, since they are never going to be drafting ever again, is going to be to the Dolphins, who forfeited their first pick. So RIP. But still, uh, again, I think, honestly, San Francisco acquiring CMC, probably they'll be here. I don't know if they'll actually change very much in the draft process, though. So with that being said, I think being able to go after a linebacker is certainly a good option here. You could also go after a DB. And you know what? I'm going to have a little bit of fun here. I think I did this in this week's mock draft. I'm going to go Brian Branch. I'm a big fan of this. Super versatile defensive back. I think that on offense, you can, like McDaniel's going to be fine putting pieces wherever the hell he wants. But with a versatile piece like Branch, it feels very Javon Hollandy in the fact that Javon could play multiple positions. Same thing with Brian Branch. He is stellar, and I got to show some love. Uh, pick number 20, the Ravens are sitting here. And again, I think that wide receiver would be a very good option. Butte finally came out and played a 155-yard game. Super happy to see that. But um, if you are sitting here, I mean, again, there's not many positions this team needs. I'm just going to be blunt. I would look at Paris Johnson. Again, like you could certainly like lock up one of these tackle positions in the long run. I know that people are talking about um, who uh, Daniel Fayolele. He played pretty well in the game they played. I think, honestly, I would continue investing in the offensive line. I'm just going to be purely 100% here. Like, if Paris Johnson's on the board, I kind of want to go that route. I know wide receiver is a position people say you should target, but, I mean, we've seen guys who just pop up out of nowhere later on and be able to make big impacts. So, it's down to Paris Johnson or it could go down to like Cam Smith. It's one of those two, but I I think it's more realistic to go after a corner. If Marcus Peters is really that pissy, it's, it's a better scheme fit. So pick 21, uh, I, I think that you guys know exactly where this is going. Antonio Johnson, sex, safety out of Texas A&M. Uh, you do need to get some superstars on that team. That's certainly one of them. And we've seen a lot more linebackers pop up in this class, more than safeties. So now it's a more of a premium position than ever before. Pick 22, we've traded back with the Falcons. Now, you guys can get a corner two here, uh, or you can get an edge rusher. So, I'm pretty sure I already took, uh, did Okia get, yeah, there he is. So, uh, obviously, Jared Verse off the board. But there are some really stellar edge rushers here. I do want to emphasize that. But, again, also with our position in the second round, I am genuinely concerned about being able to get a top end, uh, top end cornerback two. And I think Tyree Stevenson is totally worth it. He's had some games where he's been very tumultuous, but 
I think if you get past the issues, this guy has great speed. He's even a returner. And he has amazing size, six foot, 212 pounds. And he's great in man coverage, very sticky. I think that's a great addition to this team, especially he's good in the run game. And when you face off against Derrick Henry, might be kind of nice to have a cornerback be able to at least slow him down. So this is a two round mock. We got to make sure we're hydrated up in this bitch. So pick number 23, speaking of. So we got the Titans on the board and they are going offensive line hands down. You have your selection of top end dudes and I have Javon Foster in the top 10. So don't think that I'm saying, oh wow, he's falling for a long, uh, for a long time. Am I lower? No, this is a, it might be the perfect team for him. He's an amazing run blocker. I think he could go to a better team. I'm going to be honest. He could go to a team that does use more of a wide zone because he's athletic. He's all get out. But I still think he's a top end talent. I think it's worth taking the risk. And again, when you have a mobile quarterback like Malik Willis, it'd be nice to have a tackle that is a top tier athlete like Javon Foster. Pick 24. Uh, Again, so I know we talked about Sawyer performing really well, um, but... I'm not really sold on that. Again, you could end up putting Paris Johnson at right tackle, left guard. You could put him anywhere. Again, this guy has that versatility now, and I think that's a really fun option for the team. Could go Anton Harrison, but I really do think that is the best choice. And we're going back to back to back tackles. I don't know if I did this in my mock draft, but again, the Jets offensive line has been performing much better than they should. So don't get in your mind that they're like randomly super top tier. They've been playing above their pay grade. So that's awesome. I'd love that. But their identity right now is a Brees Hall in that receiving core. Get Anton Harrison, plug him in wherever. Injuries obviously ravage this team's offensive line. That's a good spot to go. Pick number 26, the Cowboys are on the board and they're going Anthony Richardson. Just kidding. I'm playing. Uh, But there is somebody who I do want to bring on here where... I mean, I'm walking on eggshells saying some of the shit that I am. So just bear in mind, this is, I, I do know it's like out of the blue. So just don't worry. Um, there's a player who's, I, they don't have him listed in the edge room, but he's an edge rusher, but he just recently played his first snaps at linebacker. And uh, for this year, he's played it before. And he looks unbelievable. And I say this lightly because Obviously, it's very tough to end up like saying, hey, this is the guy. Um, Michael Parsons is the comp that comes to mind. Not one-to-one. But if you ended up like if Michael Parsons is at Erewhon or Whole Foods, like let's just say it's one of those products. This is like Target. So yeah, it's a, it's a significant step down. But like you still get the same essences of flavors. You still get like it, it could eventually be a brand that could eventually go to Whole Foods. So I'm I'm doing this lightly. It's not an edge rusher. He is going to play linebacker. But my God, he's six foot two, 230 pounds. He, he moves so well. And he got like an interception in the red zone. Well, like in the other team's red zone uh, last week. He just looked incredible. Like honestly incredible. So I'm finding the guy who I would not select. Um, and like it's going to be... I'm not going to select Nolan Smith in the first two rounds. So it's going to be Jacoby Windman out of uh, Michigan State. So yeah, that's a guy who I just randomly became really high on. Like I fell in love, like love at first sight type stuff. Uh, He did not perform well as an edge rusher, like just a pure edge. And obviously that's where I'm saying, hey, don't think it's Micah. But he is a, he was probably a late day two, early day three edge. And I think he's a round one linebacker. So I think it's worth it. I, he's awesome. Huge fan. Had to shout him out right there. Uh, you could, of course, go after the more awesome option of Trent Simpson at the moment. But I had to just go out on a limb and make this a little bit more fun for me. Pick number 27. The Giants are on the board. And again, I really do want to take a quarterback for this team. I know y'all hate when I take a QB for this team. I know. And y'all are saying, Anthony Richardson, the first, he probably is going to return. He very well might. But the fact is, next year's class is not going to be any easier for him to be able to compete in. In this class, he actually might. Again, we're talking about Will Levis, who has, like, he has he had issues replacing Sean Clifford. So we're talking about him in the top 15. I think Anthony Richardson might be comfortable coming out. And this is a team that might say, like, hey, listen, Lamar was, was like, kind of slept on. Why can't we do that with Anthony Richardson? 
Big guy, big arm, great athlete. Again, there's other positions this team needs, but none of them are going to be as impactful as Anthony Richardson at quarterback. Again, we've seen Brian Dable turn Josh Allen from a very inaccurate quarterback into somebody who's a pinpoint accurate quarterback and taking him from somebody. It's like, I remember those first year and a half. I was like, man, like it, this kid's looking like he's, he needs some work. And randomly Dable's like, I got you. I know a lot of people are saying DJ should come back, but the fact is, you know that there's a ceiling on Daniel Jones and you also know there's a price tag on Daniel Jones. If you guys want to say, Hey, let's resign him for a year. Have him continue to prove himself. Fine. But you know what? You're kind of losing out. Like, I don't want you guys to be like, well, what if? What if we got Anthony Richardson? What if he panned out? Guy is literally built like Josh Allen. So just watch out for that. Pick number 28, the Chiefs are here. I think Brian Breesey is like a god tier send. So I'm going to definitely do that. Uh, Vikings, if you're sitting here, I mean, honestly, I would actually like to look at Trent Simpson because he deserves the respect. I have him as a top 25 player. So again, big fan of him. But... I mean, again, this team needs defensive back, and I don't really... I see one corner, and it's Jalen Jones, and I might eventually, I might just pull the trigger on that because I do think this team desperately needs it. And he's really good at man. I just am a little bit worried about him athletically. Of course, you're taking an ancient Patrick Peterson, so does that really matter? No. So we're going to do it. We're going to take another corner in the first. Corners are going, like, off the board right now. Uh, Jalen Jones, my cornerback two out of Texas A&M, uh, limited a little bit athletically, has had some injuries, but when he's on the field, his awareness is off the charts. Really damn good impress as well. He let up six yards over a three-week span on one target. So those were against some pretty good teams as well. Pick number 30, we have the Bills. And again, Brian Branch is my dream for this team. It's my dream, but he's not there. And I would like to look at the safety room. Like JL Skinner is an awesome option, but I know damn well I'm not taking him probably with any of these teams. So this is a good spot to trade back. Again, you have guys like Andre Carter on the board, Will McDonald. Like they're, there's legitimately really damn good talents, but there's also quarterbacks and there are teams that need that quarterback. And I'm going to do this from the last week. I had the, why the hell are all these teams trying to move up? Uh, Seattle Seahawks could certainly make a move here. You know, if they do want to move back in the end of the first, they have two second round picks. I think that's very bright. They jump the Lions as well. I think that'd be a very fun option for them. So they're going to give up pick 38. And again, this is only probably like a 300 point difference, if that. So that's legitimately a fourth round pick. And um, oops, <laughs> we're going to do that. Um, like legitimately, I only think you need to send like 109 here. It says it will likely be accepted by both sides. So like, I do think that's a really fair trade. Again, 109 is a early fourth round pick. I think it's more than worth it. And this team, honestly, now you get a fifth year contract. So it's up to you whether you want Geno Smith's replacement to be Tanner McKee or an understudy. You don't have to be a replacement or Cameron Ward. And honestly, I'm loving the idea of Cam Ward right now. Like, I'm really into it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do Cameron Ward. Because again, you don't need him to work. You can have him sit for a year. And you've seen how Geno is able to work in the offense. And I think that's just much better built for someone who's a little, bit, a little more mobile. And I wouldn't want it to be up to the Lions to determine who that's going to be. Pick number 31. This is probably going to be an edge rusher, but... Again, I want to shout out these linebackers who didn't get taken. I do love them. I do. I like Trent Simpson. I like Noah Sewell. I don't want to show, show any shade towards these guys because I think they're great. But if you are sitting here and you are the Eagles, um, oh my God, we already took an edge rusher. <laughs> we got Miles. Uh, we got Will Anderson. A uh, cornerback would be the other position I'd target, but there's nobody on the board. So this is a great spot to trade back to. Damn. This actually is all working out for the best. Uh, we might see Tanner McKee end up going here. Like, there's Trent Simpson too, and I think there are teams that might want to do that. We're going to move up with the Lions. Uh, I think that's a that's probably the best case scenario for us. So let's go with the Detroit Lions here. They're moving up, and again, it's only going to cost like 130 and maybe a next year seventh. I know that. Oh, next year sixth. How he's gonna how he's gonna flee some? We're gonna force this trade. So they're gonna move up a couple spots. And they're going to eventually, so with their first pick, we ended up going Miles Murphy, which is awesome. Super happy for them. Uh, with this one, they're going to go after a position they're desperate for. 
Um, they're going to go after a linebacker, RIP to the mouse. Uh, they're going to go Trent Simpson. So I think that's great. Let's fly through the second round. Let's have some fun here. So pick number 32, The uh, we have the Carolina Panthers, who now have two second round picks. So this is going to be a fun one. I'm excited. This this draft totally, like, totally altered. I do think an edge rusher certainly is on the table. Obviously, a running back is as well. But I don't think you spend your second round pick on a running back. Like, or your first second round pick when you could just spend your later second round pick on that running back. Okay, there we go. RIP to the mouse once again. So Andre Carter is a guy who I would love to put into this squad but so is Will McDonald. It really just depends on whichever one that you like more. I'm going to say that I like Will McDonald a little more because he's still putting up three pressure games, even on weeks where he's not performing as well. So if that's the case, I think I like that. However, there is somebody who I want to put into here who I don't have above those two, but I think right now his play is better. And it's BJ Ojolari. And I think that that might just be a little bit more of a fun option. It's a little bit of a twist in the game. And again, he's a hyper athlete. He's putting up seven pressures a game. So uh, obviously it's not every single game he's putting up seven pressures, but there have been multiple seven pressure games against teams like Florida that have actually pretty solid offenses. So I think that that's pretty indicative that he could make a big impact in the next level. I could certainly see him rising into the first. The problem is there's so many edge rushers. So let's continue on here. We already got Jalen Carter here for uh, for the Raiders. I think safety or linebacker, excuse me, is a great option here. You got Noah Sewell. Like, I don't really know. Corey Littleton just hasn't panned out. Just, I, I think that would be a really nice addition. Now, offensive line, I think is also paramount. And I mean, you do have Darnell Wright here. I got to respect Darnell Wright. Uh, we're just going to say Zion Nelson. Obviously, I'm not drafting Zion in these two rounds. We got to go Darnell Wright. He performed really well against Alabama. I don't know if he played himself into the first yet. I do have him there from time to time, but he's played right tackle and left. So if Colton goes down, you have a really good option there. He's better than Thayer Mumford. And I like Thayer Mumford. That's the thing. I actually had a third round grade on Thayer. So I'm happy to see he's starting, but uh, Darnell Wright's looking really good. He let up a pressure on, on 76 snaps. I think 49 of them were pass snaps. So Really good reps, like really good job versus Alabama. So good for him. Happy to see Zion Nelson perform that well. Uh, the Eagles are back here. Speaking of Will Anderson, I mean, oh, I mean this team, freaking ridiculous. Obviously, if Eli Ricks, I, I'm not having him come out. If he were coming out, I would totally select him. We're going to let Howie do his magic in free agency. And again, I mean, people are saying linebacker. I would just say like, I, I can't. Like, no Sue will be fun for him, but, you know, Edwards should be gone. I would love to be able to see Kaiser White get brought back. I'm just going to be honest. I think that would be the best move for the franchise. So defensive interior certainly is one that I would like to look at with, like, Gervon Dexter here. And that would be a really fun option for the team. I think Gervon Dexter would be great. And that honestly might be the position that we do go. Of course, running back Blake Corum. I know that people are saying Booby Miles might be brought back. And I love Miles, but... I, I don't think that's really worth it. Again, you could go another safety here. Uh, I do know that Chauncey is not like he he's one man. I think you need multiple safeties to be able to perform at a super high level. And I'm blanking on if you guys have another safety worth mentioning. So I do think that somebody who I absolutely love in jail Skinner would be a very good option. That being said, I do know people are talking about right guard being a potential concern, a position to be able to replace. I'm not there yet. I'm not. And um, so overall, I honestly think this is a more fun option. Let's go Gravon Dexter here. Again, I don't know if you guys are going to want to pay Fletch their like the longer term money. I don't think that you're going to want to have to pay Javon Hargrave. So getting somebody who's a really good option next to Jordan Davis in the pass rushing aspect might be a very nice compliment. Then you have Milton Williams subbing in there as well. Obviously, Gravon has been on my stock down watch list for a little bit, but he's still an incredible talent. Pick number 35, the Saints, and um, you guys got to get a future quarterback, right? So Tanner McKee has to be the option. You see that you have success with Andy Dalton, too. So I think Tanner McKee would be a very good mold to continue building your team off of. Pick 36, uh, the, why do I want to say the Colts? I keep thinking of the Colts for some reason, but the Texans are on the board again. And looking at the players that we've already taken for them, Peter Skoronsky as well as um, C.J. Stroud. 
I think this might be a good spot to. I've actually done this a couple times now. I don't. I don't really know if I want to go back to the linebacker route. I don't know because the value is a little bit too good on the edge rushers. So I think I'm going to go the edge rushers. We're going to go Will McDonald here. Uh, I love Andre Carter. Andre Carter would be a better fit. Let's go Andre Carter. Let's go Andre Carter. He's 260 pounds. He fits a little bit better with this team. And plus, he's from the Army, so respect our armed forces. Uh, pick 37. This might be Will McDonald. I would love Will McDonald to this team. But they did get rid of Mac Wilson. Uh, they did bring up... Okay, I can't go Noah Sewell here because they got Deion Jones. I don't know if Dion's on one year more of his contract, but regardless, I do think you could just go either way. I'm going to go Will McDonald here. He's a guy who I'm a very, very big fan of. Uh, there's very few edge rushers who I'm not considering at this point, so these placeholder players are uh, a little bit more difficult. Pick 38, we have Buffalo on the board, and again, Buffalo, I'm going to probably go safety here. We're going to go Jail Skinner. I think that's just a really nice option for the team. I think that Brian Branch is the dream pick again, but uh, Jail Skinner's a freak. You can also play him at linebacker, so I love him. 6'4", 220 pounds, big fan. Pick 39, again, a I would love Jail Skinner to the Steelers. Not the case. Um, again, I wish there were. I like. I was dying for Darnell Wright to be here because again, he could play right tackle as well. He's not. So I actually don't know where to go with the Steelers here at the moment. So wide receiver. If Chase Claypool gets traded, I know that they'll just randomly draft a stud here. So R.I.P. to whoever the hell that's going to be. I do think you could look on the interior. I do know some people are talking about left guard being a potential concern. Center, in my opinion, also a concern because, uh, you know, obviously I don't think Kendrick Green's the answer. I don't think anybody thinks Kendrick Green's the answer. I wasn't a fan of Kendrick Green when he was drafted. I didn't give that pick a B minus. I really wanted, um, oh man, I've never remembered this kid's name. Quinn Minerts. There we go. That's a dude. Nice. Um, there's a guy who I want to draft here. It's John Michael Schmidt. So you need to boost that run game. This guy's been going off this year. I want to change it up a little bit. So we're going to go John Michael Schmidt. I'm sorry to the Cardinals because I kind of just stole him right before. But again, he's a North dude. He's he, he just powers through people. I'm a big fan. Pick 40. Again, this is where guys are just sitting on the board. Like Noah Sewell needs to get taken. So let's try to find a team that needs a linebacker. I'm also looking at the Falcons here being like, you don't even have Deion Jones anymore. You can go and get Noah Sewell. Like, hell Yes. And you have that second second round pick from Indianapolis. Because again, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So for me, I think that this would be actually a really fun trade up because I don't really see, like you went Quentin Johnston. I don't really know if there's another option right now that I'm exactly dying for if I am the, uh, the Jaguars. So I'm going to trade up here with the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, again, this is a really small trade. So... I think that it's fair to, I mean, wow. I kind of feel bad for the Jaguars. Uh, you guys don't really have many picks. So we'll, we'll give that one. We'll give that one. Because I do think this is a little bit rich for a four-spot trade-up. So we're going to do that right there. And then the uh, Falcons are on the board. They're going to go Noah Sewell. I know it's not a very popular pick. But again, when you lose Deion Jones, it would be really nice to be able to add another guy in there. I know you got uh, Troy Anderson. But... I just don't know how much that's going to actually patch the holes. So Noah Sewell is going to be your guy. Pick number 41, the Bears. Uh, the Bears, we end up getting an offensive tackle. There's still some really good wide receivers on the board. If I'm not mistaken, only a couple went in the first. So uh, I think Xavier Hutchinson would be a great guy for the squad. Excellent hands, can make separation on his own. He's one of my guys. I know he dropped the game-winning catch last week, but the fact is he made six other catches that were ungodly. I'm going to give him a pass. Pick number 42, now, they have they don't have a second second round pick, so we got to be careful with this. Now with Will Levis, the Colts. Um, I think you have to go an offensive tackle here. I do. Well, they did get, actually, they did get Bernard Ryman. So I might get off that train. I think Bernard Ryman, when healthy, could actually potentially start. I wasn't that high on Bernard Ryman, so I'm happy to see that he did slip, mainly due to injury issues, though. So I can't really, like, puff my chest out on that one. So... At this pick, I think, a, I mean, cornerback would be great. I just don't think there's anybody really worth it. Clark Phillips just allowed 150 yards, so not exactly a very big fan of Clark in the moment. But, uh, I mean, honestly, we might still go offensive tackle. I don't think it's ever a bad position to go. 
I know defense, you might want to get another player here. You might want to get another edge. Like, there still are really good dudes on the board. But I'm going to go offensive line. I think that having a tackle competition is never a bad thing. You can always kick these BYU dudes into guard as well. You just have to make sure tackle is secured. So Blake Freeland's going to be the answer there. Pick 43. Uh, sorry, Cardinals. I would love to have gone after a center for you guys. Not going to be the case, but a running back definitely is somebody who I'd be a very big fan of. I would love to be able to see someone like Jameer Gibbs in this team, in this offense. I really would. Jameer Gibbs would be so fun. You know, you guys like speed. That's speed. Like, that is speed. So, Jameer Gibbs, really good option. Really good player. Pick 44, the Jaguars back on the board. So, I think corners could certainly also be a position for them to target. Chris Abrams' drain, I know, could certainly work for you guys. Um, the only issue is a pure slot. I think he's a baller. I really do think he's of a similar mold to Jalen Pitry, just kind of worse. I love Jalen Pitry, so, you know, don't get me started about that. But, I mean, again, have we gone offensive line here? We haven't. I don't think we have. We went after Quentin Johnston, didn't we? Where is he at? Yeah. So, I haven't drafted this guy yet. And the reason why, he has had a couple tumultuous games where he's let up some bad pressures. But, I still think the ceiling is there. And I used to take him in the first. Cyrus Torrance. I mean, he could end up being the first guard taken. But, this interior class just isn't very good. Pick 45. Another team that probably would have taken Osiris Torrance. Uh, we have the Seahawks now with Cam Ward, which is awesome. You got Cam Ward. If I'm not mistaken, we also have Jared Verse. And then we also have Keely Ringo. So we've addressed, you know, edge rusher, corner, quarterback. So again, this is more of like a free pick than anything. You could look, I mean, hell, there's no other guards at this moment. I know people like to talk about Cooper Beebe, but um, linebacker, actually there is one. His name is Drew Sanders. He's a big-ass linebacker. Like, Henry Teoteo deserves respect, too. But uh, Drew Sanders, he is uh, he's 230 pounds, but he has been up to 250 before as well. Has pass rushing experience. He is my linebacker, I think, four at the moment. But, again, this linebacker class is shaping up really well. And, honestly, with this pick, I know we haven't taken a tight end yet. Michael Mayer's on the board. Uh, that might be the guy who this team really wants, and I think that would be a good fit. Again, like you're getting a good blocker there. I don't think Michael Mayer's all that, just to be honest with you. I don't really think so. So I think it's fine. Pick 47, we have the Patriots. And Patriots, we've already drafted a wide receiver. I think you could, I mean, Bill's going to find some dude like late on and just absolutely maul. So I don't know if linebacker is exactly a concern. I do know that you trade away Chase Winovich. And when you can get somebody of the caliber of Derek Hall, Isaiah Foskey, uh, you take it. Just going to be honest. So Derek Hall is a really fun one. I think that Bill might like the fighting Irish's Isaiah Foskey a little bit more for his potential. So that's where we're going to go. Pick 48, the Dolphins' first actual pick. You guys went after Brian Branch. I think this would be a good spot to go after a linebacker in Henry Toto. I think it's a good spot. Just continue developing that team. Pick 49, you have the Packers back on the board. Jack Smith and Jigba's on the team. And if Jack Smith and Jigba is on the team, I think that it's fair to just say, hey, we're going to go BPA. Um, you could go another wide receiver, but I think tight end with Sam Laporta is your best option. Again, like I have him as tight end one. So he's the only guy with a first round grade on him too. So, you know, I do got to show some love to the Packers here. Pick 50, we got Bijan Robinson already for uh, the Buccaneers. Now, I think that you could continue to try to bolster the offense. But I do think when the value is there, you go defense. I really do. And ZTF, obviously, you guys have taken Project Edge Rushers out of uh, Washington before. You've seen what he could do. I think he'd be a good situational edge rusher. Pick 51 via San Francisco. Um, this is going to be Blake Corum. You're getting your new option. Yeah, you're getting your new blood there in, um, in Carolina. So big fan of that. Pick 52. The Ravens, we've already gone after a corner. Now, I'm forgetting who I was actually trying to target there as well. Obviously, I don't... Like, linebackers certainly would be some... Ooh, I do like Tyron Hopper. We're going to go with Tyron Hopper here. I do think that his pass rushing ability as well would be really fun for this team. Patrick Queen, obviously not the complete answer. So, getting somebody of that caliber, not too shabby. P 
Pick 56. Just kidding. Can't read. Pick 53. So the Rams, we've already taken all of the offensive line. RIP. Um, but I know that they're also looking for a running back. They're trying to trade for Christian McCaffrey. And a lot of these guys are very good players. And I could totally see them going after Devon A-Chain, another guy who's very fast, a very good receiver. Um, if they're really trying to go for it, they're going for it. They really want to just make impact. There you go. Pick 54. So unfortunately, most of the running backs that I would take are now off the board. So RIP to that. Uh, next thing I want to do is probably try to, I mean, Zach Evans is still on the board, but I don't know if I'm willing to go there yet. You could try to get another weapon for this team. And I know I've heard a lot of A.T. Perry love for this team. Uh, you know, obviously thinking of two twin towers on the outside, just absolutely mauling it out with um, obviously Kyle Pitts there too. Could be really fun. And I think that might be a really cool option. Like you obviously saw how Alec Pierce was an amazing addition there. Uh, in Indianapolis, but I was more so referencing him in Cincinnati where he was like Desmond Ritter's best target. And I think that'd be a really fun option. Now, other positions we could target defensive interior. Honestly, defensive interior might be the better move though. I know y'all like it, but Tyler Davis is going to be the guy who I am targeting. We got Noah Sewell. I want to make sure that we get everything. Tyreek Stevens. Oh, we got a cornerback too already. Awesome. I forgot about that. Forgot that we traded back and got corner too. That's awesome. Uh, we're revamping the defense. We're going to go Tyler Davis. Uh, he's a freak pass rusher. He's, in my opinion, probably better than uh, a guy who I took in the first, and Brian Breesey. Pick number 55, we have the Titans. So Titans, we've already drafted offensive line. I think another position you could target is wide receiver. There's a lot of really good ones here, but we're going to go Jermaine Burton. Obviously, he's a really good value. Uh, and again, you're taking him away from a AFC contender there. In the Chargers, who I think are going to be perfectly fine going back to Boston College and drafting their stud wide receiver. Uh, okay, we got to find somebody who I'm not drafting. Uh, by the way, Keishon Butte, I'm thinking he's returning just because he's shown his potential, but uh, underutilized. Zay Flowers, he's the entire offense there. I think he'd be a really good deep threat. He also can be a boundary. I'm a huge fan. Pick 57, the Jets. Again, this is another team that could use a linebacker, but I've already taken a billion of them. So, you know, tight end, probably the best mold to be able to go draft. And Jaheim Bell is a freak, so I would love to see him in this offense. Pick 58, the Cowboys. We've already drafted Jacoby Windman. I know that corner is also a concern for the Cowboys. Um, this is a spot where I feel comfortable with Clark Phillips. Can play boundary, can play slot. He hasn't proven himself to be worth it as a first, but he's certainly done it as a second. Pick 59, the Giants are back on the board. And I know people are talking about wide receiver being a position of need for this team. I'm going to get an actual boundary big threat that is deserving of starting in the NFL. And he's not on the list. So again, placeholder Keishon Butte. But um, Justin Shorter, 6'4", 6'3", 230 pounds. And he was the number one wide receiver coming out of his high school class. I have him as my number four wide receiver in the class. So I have a lot of, I got a lot of love for this guy. Very big fan. Pick 60, the Chiefs. Again, this team doesn't really need that much. I, I really don't think they do. But when in doubt, go edge rusher. Derek Hall going to be a good option for the team. Uh, pick number 61, we have the uh, Vikings where what do we do with them in the first? We got, uh, we got a corner. And I think that was Jalen Jones. So if we got Jalen Jones, I think a, I mean, you could honestly look at wide receiver here as well. And that wouldn't be a bad option. I would love to see them try to implement Josh Downs into the squad, a really good separator. And I think that's exactly what they do. You got Jalen Rager, but again, that's a situational player. Pick 62, uh, you got the Buffalo Bills here, and they've already gone after a safety in jail Skinner. So I think a good option, again, is continuing to bolster that running game. Zach Evans is getting a lot of hype. I think that would be a really good option. Ending off with the Eagles. So... Again, what have we done with the Eagles? We've gotten Jervon Dexter as well as Will Anderson. We got to do something on the offensive side, if I'm not mistaken, because, you know, Howie's got a Howie. And I really do want to go after a running back here. I think Deuce Vaughn is a great scat back. Again, I think that having this guy who can just be a like a, an elite threat in the receiving game is how you're going to be able to make it in the NFL. I think Booby would be a really good guy. You've seen Kenny Gainwell try to be that receiving back. I think this would be a better option. So that's going to be the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side.